All right, I would like to talk about another model, the maximum curving location problem, MCLP, okay? which is different than the one we saw before, which was a set covering problem, where here we're trying to maximize the demand that is covered. Okay? The other one, if you remember, it was to minimize the number of facilities. Okay? So what are the objectives and the constraints? So our objective is to maximize the amount of covered demand. Okay? Now, <coughs> that demand could either be at the individual level, could be aggregated at the geographic unit. The demand is covered, and that's a constraint, if and only if a facility is open and can cover that demand node. So for instance, a facility is within reach of that demand node. Another constraint that we have, this is new compared to before, is that there is a maximum number of P facilities. So what is P? P is a number that's an external number that is provided by, um, by, the, by, by the user or the stakeholder or whatever. Uh, and oftentimes the budget that is available at hand will determine what uh, that value of P is. Okay. That's also where we do a lot of sensitivity. And then finally, a new uh, parameter is uh, g sub i, which is the demand at i. Again, in the example that we'll show in a second, this we will assume that demand is 1 everywhere, but afterwards I will show other examples where the demand um, will, will change. Okay, let's try to first put this in a mathematical form, and then we will work this out like we did previously. Okay, I'm going to go over the formulation of the MCLP. We have an objective function maximized here. We're trying to maximize the demand uh, at i, or j sub i, multiply here by a decision variable y sub i. And if we look at what it is, y sub i is equal to 1 if i is covered by at least one facility and zero otherwise. So we have this new decision variable here in the objective function, okay? And then this is subject to a set of constraints. The first one is that um, <coughs> a demand here, or uh, sorry, a demand uh, can be covered only if there is at least one facility in its area that can cover it. Okay. Um, and then, and that's for all of the demand nodes. Uh, and here, this one is also quite important. It puts a limit on the number of facilities that we can have. So you have here the summation over all the j's, right, all the facilities, and it should be less or equal to p. could also be equal to p. That kind of depends on, on what you want. Um, but p, remember, this is a budget that determines how many facilities we can open. And then you have the regular integer constraints. So now I'm going to work out uh, that example that I have on the blackboard, and then later on I will show another example, a little bit larger, uh, um, to illustrate the mechanism of this uh, formulation. All right, we're going to work out the problem here. So remember, our objective is to maximize the demand that is covered. So we're going to have here maximize y1 plus y2 plus y3 plus y4 plus y5 plus y6 plus y7 plus y8 plus y9 plus y10 plus y11 plus y12 plus y13. See there is a lot here. No. For each uh, of the demand node here, we're going to write out the constraint. The first one is going to be xa should be greater or equal to y1. Second one, um, there is nothing, so um, <coughs> what you have here is going to be 0, right, because no variable here can cover demand node 2, so it would be greater than y2. So here you can already see that y2 is going to be equal to 0. I mean, it cannot be equal to 1. For the third one here, <coughs> We're going to have xa greater or equal to y3. Um, the next one for 4, we have the same. xa greater or equal to y4. For fifth, same thing. xa greater or equal to y5. For uh, the number 6, the same. xa greater or equal to y6. Okay. Uh, 7, we have nothing, so... 0 greater or equal to y7. Keep going here, it's going to be for a matter of space. We'll have 8. 8 is xa plus xb 
greater or equal to y8 here. For 9 here we have xb greater or equal to y9. For 10 here we have nothing, so greater or equal to y10. Okay, for 11 we have xc greater or equal to y11. For 12 we have also xc greater or equal to y12. And then for the very last one we have nothing greater or equal to y13. Okay, now other constraint we have to put together is that we can only open a certain amount of facilities. So we have xA plus xB plus xC right here less or equal to P. And then I will add the integer constraints, right? So xA, xB, xC should be greater, I mean, should be in the integer here. And then all the y, so I'm going to put y, y2 and all the others up to y13 should be in the 0, 1. Now, we're going to work this out in uh, Cplex uh, right now. All right, I have now uh, written the formulation of this problem here in a notepad document. You can see here the objective function. There are 13 variables that are unknown. We don't know if uh, these demand nodes will be covered or not, subject to, and here this is very interesting on how I have written it. Remember, we had something for the first one, xA should be greater or equal to y1. Now, important to note that Cplex does not like to have variables on the right-hand side. So you have to bring those variables to the left-hand side. Now for the second one, remember we had 0 should be greater or equal to uh, y2. Now we brought y2 on the left hand side and it's minus y2. So and so on and so forth. Okay. Then we have here that constraint that says the number of facilities should be limited to p. Here I'm putting p is equal to 1. And then I have the binary uh, constraint at the end for both x's and y's. So that's my problem here. I'm going to go in cplex. I'm going to go read. I'm going to take this file here and put that p. Okay, and I'm going to optimize it. Now, if I optimize it, it says that the first value is uh, 6 here, right? So that's 6. I can also see which um, variables are selected or covered, rather. So we see that um, xA is the um, facility that is chosen, and these are the variables, or the demand nodes, rather, uh, which are covered. Now, it's interesting to see what happened if we had it put it equal to 2. In this case, we can see that this will be equal to 8. Now, if we want to know, both xA and xC are selected, right? And you can see which demand nodes are covered. And if we were to change this to 3 here, we can also see what's going on. The objective function is 9, display solution variables here. So, remember um, that they were a total of 13 demand nodes, but four of them could not be covered no matter what. So that is why you do 13 minus four, then it's nine. Nine would be the best objective function that you could get if you would put p is equal to three, for instance. So putting p equal one, two, three, and then further if you had more facilities is sort of this interesting sensitivity problem.